the last show of the week. We've made it to Friday. I'm Joe Jaquin, CEO of the Patriot Trading Group, and our toll-free number, 800-951-0592. I know it's ingrained into your brain, and everybody all of a sudden wants some. It's all the problems that I'm going to bring up stuff that they pretended we forgot. They pretended that they fixed it all. Everything's wonderful. Just ask them, and they'll tell you. We got a great show lined up for you today. Don't forget the website at allamericangold.com. And, and Ramon's been on fire lately. Uh, just been great stuff up there every single day. You got to go out there, check it out, allamericangold.com. Uh, don't forget, you know, I don't talk enough about an IRA. We can help you. You know, don't be fooled. You see them every once in a while. You start seeing the scams about the you can store your gold at your house through an IRA. You can't. The IRS actually has <laughs> a lot of things they do, you know, but they actually put in a section of the tax code just to deal with that. Uh, so if you want to do it legally, call us. We can help you. Don't forget about our medals program. Listen, we're trying to make sure everybody has a way to get involved. I know, like today, we've got uh, – I I don't want to say I begged. I may have cried a little bit, but I really worked hard to get a great uh, special because it's all about price here at Patriot Trading Group. And, and I was able to do so, uh, but it's not cheap. Check out the metals program. If you've been listening for a while and you want to get invest in gold, you want to invest in silver, but you know we're running specials that are you know thirteen, fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars, and you don't have that kind of money for as little as a hundred dollars a month, you can get involved. You'll get four deliveries a year right to your door. So uh, check it out. Go out to allamericangold.com. Uh, and, and we can help you. If you got questions, call the 800 number, and we'll be happy uh, to answer them for you. It's another glorious uh, Friday morning here in the Valley of the Sun. It actually was a pretty decent week weather-wise. Uh, me and my buddies got out. We were able to sneak in around a golf last night, and it wasn't that hot. I don't know. It was zapped us all. We were playing with uh, one of my buddies' uh, uncles. He was in town from Wisconsin. And he's the prototypical, he's the golfer that I aspire to be when I'm 70. He he drives the ball 200 yards. He, he'll take the next shot. You know, he, he plays up from on the white tees. We're, we're on the back tees. But as long as he's 150 yards or in, the guy was a par-making machine. You know, nothing fancy. He just hit the ball straight and all that. About the 16th hole, he went down yesterday. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but I, I felt bad because it's, it's different. So he was in town from Wisconsin. Half of Wisconsin lives here already. Uh, but nonetheless, we got around in. But I'll tell you, I, I felt it a little bit. I don't know. Maybe it was more humid. I, I don't know what it was because it wasn't that hot. Uh, but remember, today or today, this weekend is Memorial Weekend. Huge shout out to all the people that have paid the ultimate sacrifice for this country. Uh, I'm trying to help. And I'm trying to help because this, there's no doubt about it. Uh, I wasn't alive during the Roman times and all of that, and, and I don't know. But, but in, at least in our lifetime, this has been the greatest country on earth. And it has to do with the people that came before us, to all of those that gave the ultimate sacrifice. We all thank you. To those that are doing it today, thank you. Enjoy it. I hope you get to spend time with your family. And then, you know, your friends and all of that, I really do have a great one. Uh, We'll be closed Monday. So uh, we'll be back again on Tuesday. And as I think about, you know, the, the greatest country on earth, and remember the show we did yesterday. Man, if you didn't, if you missed it, you got to listen to it. It's powerful because you you're really were witnessing the, the, the changing of the guard, the shifting of the power. And it's because 
of our own arrogance and our own mistakes. And today I'm going to I'm going to read to you from Jerome Powell, our new Federal Reserve chairman. And the ridiculousness that somehow we've been led to believe was going to continue our greatness and instead it's leading to our downfall. Talking about the central bank, talking about being a debtor. You cannot have economic salvation via a printing press. It doesn't work that way. And you know what we gave up to to pretend that it did. Because you know what? Let's face it. This is not 1980 anymore. This is not 1990 anymore. This is a whole different ballgame. Right? We talk about how the jobs market... That number doesn't mean anything anymore. Unemployment doesn't mean anything anymore. Jobless claims doesn't mean anything anymore because we live in a whole different world. And in order to keep the pretending and the game playing and to keep themselves in power, we gave it all away. And we gave away so much more than what we can possibly even imagine. It's it's almost, it's beyond belief really what it is. You know, when you think about it, here it is, Memorial Weekend, and the Pentagon had to come out and tell us all, hey, you know what, we actually can't buy all the munitions, and especially the, the newest generation of weaponry, because this stuff doesn't exist in the United States anymore. Patriot Radio News Hour. We're going to talk about Federal Reserve next. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. So yesterday, you know, here's what we learned yesterday. We learned that the Federal Reserve was lying from the get go. Right? We learned that that two percent number that you know, I, I don't even know where that came from, right? They, they made it up. I, it wasn't in a textbook somewhere, right? It wasn't in some form of, you know, quantitative theory of imaginary numbers and I, who knows what. They just came up and they had a meeting. Oh, you know what? Let's say 2%. Yeah, that sounds good. That's not too hot. That's under 2%. It's Goldilocks. And... and and they got the great mouthpiece, right? Because remember now, when it comes to your money, and, and, it, and it's killing me, and, I, and I'm glad a lot of you have your 401ks have hopefully recovered, but get ready. And, and they're out there, and, and the bankers and the guys that, that are behind the ridiculousness of this debt, I mean, it's ridiculous. So many metrics out there telling you, and of course, they never see a bubble. They can't see anything, and it's right in front of our face. All of you know it. You know it. You want to live in denial about it, because let's face it, preparing stinks. It takes effort. It takes work. Something that America seemingly doesn't want to do anymore. We want to believe we can have economic prosperity with a printing press, and we don't have to put in the work. And so yesterday they came out with their minutes, and they knew. They're like, oh, yeah, inflation, it's over 2%, but, you know, it's okay. Yeah, it's only for a while. And they may be right about that. I I don't know. I don't know if they're right or not. I don't think they are. Unfortunately, I, I do believe this. I do believe that the great economic recovery that I don't know – the people that thought that was going to happen. And I've been very consistent. It's not, that's not going to work. I applaud the effort. Again, I've told you about the tax cuts all along. Giving these huge tax cuts to corporations was a terrible mistake. Just was. They're just going to buy back their own stock, and that's what they've done. Right, no, the, the the average person on the street isn't any better off because if you did get a little bit more, You've lost it all. You've lost it all at the gas pump. You lost it all. Right? Pick the items. And inflation is running rampant, and they're out there saying, it's okay. So what? It'll go back down sometime. 
And then today, Jay Powell, he was talking about the Federal Reserve's independence. See, here's what we've learned, right? They got real scared when they all came crashing down, right? Remember Ron Paul? Ron Paul was getting real popular. Right? We were talking about we need to, at minimum, we need to audit the Federal Reserve, right? We, and really, I think it should be much more than that, right? Outside of, I think, you know, let's just be clear. The Federal Reserve needs to end. We need to go back to the gold standard. We need to go back to living within our means. We need to stop this sham of somehow of creating debt and fractional banking so a few people can line their pockets equals economic prosperity. It does not, my friend. Because when you look at America today versus America of 100 years ago, more people live in poverty today than they did then. We have the majority, we're almost at the majority of the country now, can't even be in the middle class. That is not prosperity. But he, they're getting worried. And I've been convinced all along, they already know what's going to happen. They probably know better than I do. Matter of fact, I'm probably, I know they do. They absolutely know better than I do because the, I'm not in the meeting with them. God, I'd love it. Wouldn't that be great? So now all of a sudden, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you an example. Remember, we've been talking about Italy blowing up. And I told you, it's so complicated, I don't even have my arms around it. And then today, somebody much smarter than me put it all back together. Because the Spanish bond market blew up today. Portugal's bond market blew up today. Ireland's bond market. Remember the pigs? Remember that acronym? Portugal, Ireland, Italy, Greece, and Spain. Right? Remember now, they fixed everything. Well, we know what happened to poor little Greece. Right? They, they, got, they got to be a guinea pig. And now the pig's problem is back, right? Again, countries that live beyond their means, and they know they're drowning in a sea of debt. And just like U.S. Treasuries, nobody wants them. And now all of a sudden you're starting to see central bankers Getting word. You th- think about all the things Jay Powell could have talked about this morning. Could have talked about inflation. Could have talked about rate hikes. Could have talked about GDP and the economy. Could have talked about any, a number of things. Instead, he wanted to talk about power. And particularly the power of the central bank, who we've obviously given way too much to. Fed's independence from political pressure must be respected if it is to succeed in controlling inflation, maximizing employment, and regulating the financial system. That's what he said. So let's just break down each one of these. Controlling inflation. I give you an F, Mr. Powell, because we already know you lie about it to begin with. You misrepresent the facts. Yesterday, your colleagues came out on TV and said, hey, listen, we're okay with higher inflation. I guess if, as long as you say you're okay with it, then that must mean you're controlling it. <laughs> right? Right? Hey, I'm okay with it. I'm okay if uh, the wolf eats a few chickens. I'm still guarding the head out. It's okay. It's only a couple. Maximizing employment. I mean, think about it. According to your own data that you like to throw out there, it's maximized. 
Yet, over, over we're approaching forty percent of the workforce now having to work two jobs. I mean, how much more can you think about what you guys have done? We went from one person working in a family to everybody working in the you know both mom and dad working to now both mom and dad working and a lot in a lot of cases both mom and dad working multiple jobs and we're gonna you know we're gonna call that success and of course my favorite regulating the financial system see you know, that's, that's of course now just so you know what that means Right. That's not just the banks, because you know. Let's face it; they haven't done a very good job doing that. They're talking about Wall Street, bond market. You know, we got to regulate. We got to be independent. Why? How does that make anything better? Right. All as it does is lead to corruption and gaff. You know that. It makes no. I mean, it actually defies common sense. His remarks Friday came after Kevin Warsh. Now, Kevin Warsh, he was a former Fed guy. He was one of the guys that was on the short list to replace Janet Yellen and lost. Said in an interview earlier this month that Donald Trump did not appear to view the Fed as an independent body. He said Trump was direct about how he thought interest rates should be managed. Now, that's... The, of course he's direct. I don't want higher interest rates is what Donald Trump was telling him. And I don't want to appoint a guy that does. Right? <laughs> Trump gets this. Who wants higher rates? Nobody. Here's the problem. They're going higher not because. right. They, they want to per, you to pretend and believe that they're going higher because they're raising rates. Yeah, we're raising rates. That's why it is. Come on. Get a life if you really believe that. You have no clue what it is that you're talking about. Rates are going higher because the amount of debt, we are, we're drowning in it. And they want to pretend this is part of the game, that they're pretending like they're in control. They're not. Now, of course, Powell was in Stockholm making these speeches. I love it. You know, they're... And again, it's the U.S. Federal Reserve, and yet these guys spend more of their time in other countries than they do at home. What does that tell you? It tells you all you need to know, right? It's not just about America's best interest, right? This is all a big game globally, and that's why all of a sudden the pigs are back. This is all you really need to know. I told you, and I told you, and I told you time and time again. They didn't fix anything. Did they break up a single bank? No. Matter of fact, there's thousands of less banks today than 10 years ago. The biggest banks are even bigger. Oh, by the way, uh, Barclays is blowing up, just in case you guys want to know. Is it Barclays or Deutsche? I, you know what? I, I better Let me double check. It's one of the two. It's either Deutsche Bank or Barclays, uh, and, and people are starting to, again, we're back into... Mm, I don't know if I want the to, to let this bank borrow money based on their their debt portfolios anymore. All of it's coming back. We must not forget the lessons of the past, Powell said, when a lack of central bank independence led to episodes of runaway inflation. And economic contraction, he said. See, that was what did it. It wasn't that we let the banks recklessly leverage themselves. It wasn't because we allowed for the Wall Street to be too loosely managed and, and go incredibly wild with speculation. And it definitely wasn't because we printed too much money. No, no, no. What it was was, you know, we, we were feeling the pressure uh, from from whether it be the president, whether it be Congress, and therefore that's what that's what did it all. Yeah, that's that's what happened. <laughs> Do they believe this nonsense? You know what? Here's the thing. I actually think he does. 
I truly believe in his heart of hearts. That's what he believes. Following Warsh's comments regarding of Trump, members of the Senate Banking Qu- uh, Committee quizzed Trump's nominees at the Federal Reserve about the importance of Fed independence. Let me tell you right now. Here's what we need to do immediately. Everything needs to be an open book. We need a full audit. We need to understand what it is that they've really done. You know, and I, I and I say this all the time, and, and people do too, and, and a lot of you, if you're business owners, you understand exactly what it is I'm going to talk about. If you give your employees opportunity, eventually one of them is going to steal from you because you gave the opportunity, because you didn't have proper checks and balances in place in the right situation at the right moment at the right time. They're going to steal from you. And this is exactly what the Federal Reserve has been doing. The problem is they steal from us. This is the Phyllis Schlafly Report, the conservative pro-family broadcast of Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, a leading voice for the sanctity of life, traditional education, the Constitution, and American sovereignty. And now from the archives of Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, here is Phyllis Schlafly. There are not many books that are designed to teach children in the early grades an appreciation for the principles on which our nation was founded. So on this Memorial Day, let's talk about a new book called Founder's Fables, Ten Tales for Future Patriots. It was written by an elementary school teacher named Laurie Cockerell, who used her knowledge of what kinds of characters and language appeal to young children. This book is a collection of ten fables that introduce kids to the values of America's founding fathers in an age-appropriate way. Each story is introduced with a quote from a founding father. Then the fun begins with rhyming stories and humorous illustrations to amuse young readers, such as whimsical fables about ducks and beavers and monkeys. With these and other stories... Laurie Cockerell illustrates conservative American values that are often assumed to be too complicated for young children, such as the national debt, eminent domain, self-reliance, government intervention, and free speech. Each fable is followed by a suggested art project and two sets of questions, one for younger children and another for older kids. The questions and activities offer opportunities for deeper learning and conversations between children and their parents or grandparents. The illustrations and rhymes of the fables are especially suited to 5- to 12-year-olds, but some of the questions will definitely interest older children. You can download a sample chapter for free at www.foundersfables.com. The website also offers a list of a dozen family activities that encourage learning more about the Founding Fathers. The name of this useful book for little kids is Founders' Fables, Ten Tales for Future Patriots by Laurie Cockerell. This has been the Phyllis Schlafly Report from Phyllis Schlafly Eagles. What's the best way to rekindle the spirit of Phyllis Schlafly and the grassroots movement she energized? In this digital age, patriots and pro-family Americans can find insight and inspiration on our website, phyllisschlafly.com. Then, share your own heart and mind on social media. So join us at phyllisschlafly.com and every weekday for the Phyllis Schlafly Report. Welcome back. 800-951-0592. That is our toll-free number yesterday. And, I, and I've been telling you, listen, the market's tight now, right? Silver, it's all dried up, right? The U.S. Silver Eagles are going to be 395 a roll. On the gold markets, uh, we ran $20 libs and $5 libs yesterday. Didn't have very many. This morning, 
I was talking with our largest wholesaler, and 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 you know we were just talking, and and how all of a sudden the market's changing. The fact that I actually need to call to say, hey, do you have them? Can I actually sell them? You know, blah blah blah, and and we came to to we had a nice talk about it, and 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 I said, you know, it's Memorial Weekend. I want to do something nice. I will tell you this. When I get off the air, I will get it up on our website. I didn't have enough time because we just we just put it to bed about three minutes before I was getting on the air. I'll have it to where you can order it online as well uh, for the for the weekend. But U.S. twenty dollar liberties, they're thirteen eighty five, just like yesterday, thirteen eighty five, but. If you buy 10 or more, which, you know, 10, that's not that many, 10 or more, 13.75. And And I've got a good amount, you know, put it this way, we got about 75, 80 coins. I mean, so that's a lot better than the 20-some we had yesterday. So $20 liberties, one through nine, 13.85. 10 or more, 1375. 800-951-0592. That is our toll-free number. Get your order placed. Get it put in. Take advantage of it. I mean, you see, thinking, uh, look at gold today, by the way. Gold's been strong today. You're like, strong? It, it's not done anything. It's not like it, it's plus or minus a dollar all day today. 1304. The dollar is having a big rally today. But just like I told you, don't be fooled. This was a fool's rally. The dollar's rallying, not on good news. It's rallying because the pigs blew up to, again, right? Not to mention, I didn't even talk about Turkey, but it's all happening. All the same weaknesses are all coming home to roost, just like they're coming home to roost here. Before I get back to Jay Powell, I want to read you. So here's the second. Dow's down again, by the way. We had durable goods that was less than expected, right? That number came in soft. Then they had this consumer sentiment. Remember, they're loving this number, right? And I say it doesn't mean a whole lot. But here's what I loved about it. I want to give you some of the details because it also was much less than expected. And in it, here's what they said. Consumers have remained focused on expected gains in jobs and incomes. Right? They're focused on that. And, of course, anticipating higher interest rates, and now inflation. As past expansions have shown, now here's the Federal Reserve bullcrap, okay? Again, they make stuff up to make it feel like they actually are in control, and this proves that they're not. As past expansions have shown, rising interest rates do not suppress spending gains, as long as they are accompanied by more substantial increases in income, right? Hey, we're okay with higher inflation, but, you know, it'll be okay as long as we can get people more money. Well, here's the problem. Here's what the people said about it. The May survey, however, found that con- consumers – are now thinking that they're not going to be getting these expected gains in jobs and pay. And now the and and for the big miss in the survey, that was the culprit. They're now saying, uh oh. These consumers are starting to get upset. Right? They're seeing gas prices. You know, gas is easy. Right? Because you see it's in your face. No matter where you drive, you pass the gas station, it's in your face. And now they're starting to say, "What? Well, you know, wait a minute. Where, where is that money? I know I've been 
been cheerleading it, but I haven't actually seen it. And now they're starting to think they're really not going to get it. I had a number of meetings over several months with a number of officials, including the president, said Powell. And in no meeting, at no time, did I have ever, ever have a reason to question the independence of the Federal Reserve. I'm sorry, that was one of the uh, Fed governors. My apologies. The double-digit inflation of the 70s. So now they're trying to, to explain away why they don't need to be monitored. And remember what I've told you, what's, what's, what we're in. They don't know it yet. They'll be the last to admit it. But trust me, this is where we're at. We had deflation in the 1930s, the Great Depression. By the way, after the break, I'm going to tell you what the bond market for the first half of, well, the first part of this year, what it's done, and how does it correlate to what happened during the 30s. So stay tuned for that. There's a lot of things we can draw upon now that should get people's attention real quick about what's coming next. But they talked about the 70s. So you had deflation of the Great Depression. You had hyperinflation of the 70s. This is neither of those. And I've been telling you, this is a stagflation problem where we've got the inflation of the 70s, right? Everything's getting more expensive. The thing in the 70s, though, your wages were going with it. (laughs) That's not happening here. And I don't care how many teacher strikes you get. It's not happening. The double-digit inflation was blamed on part of Federal Reserve Chairman Arthur Burns. Right? It was his fault. Because he was reluctant to raise short-term interest rates high enough to choke off inflation because he didn't want to cause massive unemployment. See, so we got a fall guy. So how do you be an independent make that better? Patriot Radio News Hour. We'll be back after the break. So, as Jay Powell's given this speech, talks about the 70s. See, because right, inflation coming a hot topic again. And, and he wants to, to let you all know who's to blame for what, how it happened last time. And it's not the central bank. Even though Burns was reluctant to raise rates, according to Powell, Burns and other Fed officials were pressured by President Nixon, who was leery of any political blowback from rising unemployment. See, it was his fault. Now, just a little history lesson. I mean, Nixon was impeached, but in 1974, (laughs) there was a, a... you know, remember the gas crisis in the Vietnam War? Maybe that had more to do with it then, but what about 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 8? I mean, right? But you can't write, rewrite history. Richard Nixon wasn't president from 1969 to 1980. But that was why. It's not why. Right? What was, what, why was it? You, you printed too much damn money. That's why. And now today they're talking about it again. And here's what's funny. According to the speech he gave yesterday, they should be raising rates. Because they said, listen, 2% is the number. We you know, got to be vigilant. Remember, earlier this year, they were all vigilant. Yes, we're very vigilant. They're looking at this. Now that it's here, even in, you know, think about it. It's here even in their made-up world, a world that none of us live in. I want to live in that world. I do. I want to live in the world where inflation is only 2%. But 
according to them. And well, just it's slightly above that now. And according to his little speech today, hey, we need you know this guy Burns didn't raise rates when he should have, and that's what did it. But today, right, we're not raising rates, right? Well, well, and let's be clear, they're raising them a couple more times. But that was they were doing this before the inflation started, right? But now that it's here. They're not raising rates anymore. They uh, they already know. Listen, they're hoping for two more. If they could get three more hikes, they would be elated. But they're setting the stage right now that they're not going to get there. And they already know why. Right? Remember what I just read to you about the consumers. Hey, it's May. I don't see it yet. I keep looking at my paycheck every week. It's the same. Hasn't changed. Not keeping up. Starting to get a little worried. Now we're talking about entire countries blowing out their bond markets. This morning, the REITs market. You know REITs? <laughs> Finally, I've been waiting. Big headline, REITs starting to blow up. You got 77 million square feet of empty retail just this year. They didn't fix it. Here's the thing that worries me even more today, though, of all of that stuff, was news out of Russia and Saudi Arabia about oil. They both said, hey, you know what, we may have to start pumping more oil. They deliberately are driving down the price. Crude oil is off three bucks. Not that it's still way too high. But what does that really tell you? What it really tells you is all of a sudden the Chinese or whoever it may be aren't ordering as much oil, right? They're like, hey, I, can I put you down for another billion barrels? No, what, what, you only want $900 million? Then they call them back next week. Hey, can I, can I get you to that $900 million next week? Oh, wait, wait, you only want $800 million? I don't, you know, whatever the number is, right? And they're like, uh-oh. See, they know real supply and demand. We better get the price down, and hopefully they'll buy more, right? Because this this isn't good. If this is kind of the problem, they don't want to tell you yet. Slow down tier. Europe's dead. Japan's going negative. I don't know what's going to happen there. Nobody wants to talk about it. I keep looking for order. I can't find them. Right? We already know. More days than not, no one even goes to the Japanese bond auction. Everyone's being real quiet about it. Everybody's saying, you know, rates there are still, they're zero. They're negative. They are. And now they're getting ready to go. Possibly, it looks like they're going to go back into recession. This is what happens when you drown in debt. Look at us. I mean, 3% used to be a... A watch out point. Hey, we don't want to go much below 3% when we talked about GDP when I was growing up. Right? And, and the numbers in the twos, you got real worried. Right? Fed started 2.5%. Fed was lowering rates. <laughs> right? Now, I mean, we, we had a couple of quarters of three. But, you know, we had a couple of quarters of three, two with Obama. It happened. Is it better today? I, let me tell you right now. I absolutely think we'd already probably be talking about recession at Hillary won. There's no doubt about it. But it, Donald can't do it. Think about every, Think about all the stuff he's done. It's incredible. We still couldn't get it. All right? Remember, originally they were talking, you know, Larry Kudlow for what he's wrote. We're at 4%, 5% growth. Three may be the maximum. And we we may, I don't know. I don't know if we'll be able to even pull that off. Patriot Radio News Hour, final segment coming up. Final segment, Patriot Radio News Hour. Real quick, I want to tell you the Treasury performance. This is the worst year in Treasuries. Since 1931, 
and you start drawing these correlations, and, and it's never the same. Like I said, that was the deflationary period, the 70s, which Jay Powell seemingly wanted to talk about today, was a hyperinflation, which meant wages and prices were going up together. And, of course, now we've just got, <laughs> now we just got what? Prices going up. Uh, the worst start of a year since 1931, and we're about a point and a half, a percentage point and a half away from it being the worst start of all time. Something else to think about. How late is this when they talk about we don't see any problems? Bitcoin went from 300 to 19,600 in three years. And that topped out in 2017, right? Bitcoin's like $7,300, $7,400 today, which is still too high. But, you know, we see these signs. That's a, that was a sign. A Da Vinci last year sold for $450 million. The average American would have to work 7,500 years. Not 75 years, not 750 years. 7,500 years. Last year, Argentina issued a 100-year sovereign bond. Right? We remember last week, Argentina's bond market blew up. <laughs> Just last year, though, they were able to sell a 100-year bond. Europe's high-yield bonds were priced as less risk than U.S. Treasury. That was the risky stuff in Europe. Of course, that was last year. Not so anymore, right? What bond market just blew up? The market cap of Facebook exceeds the entire country of India. <laughs> There's like, I don't know, like 1.2 billion people in India. Facebook's got 25,000 employees, in case you want to know. The United States, the U.K., Germany, Japan, all say unemployment at multi-decade lows, right? That's trouble. Think about it. Japan, I just told you, is getting ready to go back into recession. The U.K. just reported horrible GDP numbers, right? And the Germany and the United States, same thing. S&P trailing price-to-earnings ratios. You take the 120 years. Only 12 years in the last 120 have they been higher. How about price-to-book ratio, which is probably maybe even more meaningful? In the last 70 years, only five times has it been higher. By the way, 2018 marked the longest winning streak for the S&P, I think, ever. Now, for the Dow, it's got to go a little farther, but I think for the S&P, it, it, it's ever. Just something to think about. U.S. $20 liberties, 1385 one through nine, 20 or more, or 10 or more, excuse me, 10 or more, 1375 at 800 951 0592. Patriot Radio News Hour. We'll talk again on Tuesday. This was a paid program and was provided for informational purposes only.